So over the last decade, we've had an explosion of immunotherapeutics available for patients um, in the clinic. Not just anti-PD-1, but anti-PD-1, CTLA-4 combinations. Uh, previous uh, meetings have brought forth the role of targeting uh, LAG-3 in combination with PD-1, and Relativity 47 has shown an improvement in progression-free survival for those patients. So it's only a matter of time until there's approval and that becomes available for the masses. In addition, uh, we've spoken about bispecifics and uh, the drug Tebentafus and its improvement in overall survival in patients with ocular melanoma. So a whole host of uh, melanomas, whether it's cutaneous, mucosal, and ocular, benefiting from immunotherapy. And through meetings like SITSI, we're understanding the role of these targets uh, such as LAG3 in ocular melanoma and the ability to combine these therapies to present to our patients optimal first-line therapies. Um, we're now presenting data with uh, Lifelucel, which is a available adoptive T-cell therapy for patients, and that data is at FDA for approval. So I foresee a bright future for our patients uh, with metastatic or unresectable melanoma. But in addition, uh, the data now from adjuvant therapy with anti-PD-1 antibodies in uh, resected stage three and stage four patients and now in high risk stage two patients where that will become approved soon and available. So not only are we benefiting patients earlier and earlier in the adjuvant setting and finding new therapies uh, with uh, metastatic and unresectable and other types of melanoma like ocular, but we're also affecting uh, brain metastases with the paradigm of combination anti-CTLA-4 and anti-PD-1, showing high response rates, rapid response, and a durability that's for years.